Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Bedardine and in this video we will learn how to use the slider widget to control a PWM output. I will start by launching TouchGFX Designer. Give a name to my application STM32H7B PWM and slider. For the application template, I will use the STM32H7B template for the discovery board. I will go with a blank UI and now I can click on create. Now the application template gets downloaded. Here I have my canvas. I will start by placing uh, background image in the canvas. Um, pick an image widget and then from image here I will select background image from my hard drive. Next I'll place a text widget here and in the text area here I will type in STM32 graphics and the title of today's video how to use the slider widget to control a PDM output. I place it to the center here and then I will change the color uh, to something like this. Okay, then I'll place a slider, slider widget, click on slider, and then close this one. Uh, I, I will go with a custom widget, no styles of in style here, I will select no style, and then for the background image, I will select a background image from my hard drive. And then uh, place it down here. And for the background field image, place another PNG file here. And then for the indicator, I place this knob image. And place it down here and center it. Then for the background position, for the X, I'll place set at 14 for the Y 14 and then here for the max value I'll, sell, I'll type in 999 that's the the maximum value we'll use later with the timer and the first start value I'll start from a duty cycle of 50 percent meaning five, 500 here and then I will go to interactions. I'll add an interaction here, and the trigger source is whenever this the slider value changed. And then from the slider, I have only one slider. And then for the action, I'll call new virtual function. And for the name of the function is set duty cycle. Okay, then I will click on generate code. Here the code is getting generated. And here I have the log of the of the build. Next I will browse to the touch GFX files by clicking on browse code down here. I have my touch GFX files here. I'll go up by one level here and I will cl double click on STM32H7B IUC file. STM32 CubeMX opens up. Here, if I go to the clock configuration, I see that the timer clock is 140 MHz. And in today's video, we'll, we'll use timer 5, channel 1. 
With this schematic, we have timer 5, channel 1, connected to page 10, pen. And it's available on connector 11 of Arduino connector on the STM32H7B discovery board. Okay, so I'll go ahead with timer 5 channel while configuration. I go to the timer, timers, peripherals, timer 5, and then timer 1, I'll select PWM generation. Okay, I see here PH10 is set up as timer 5 channel 1. Okay, I will set the prescaler to 140. I'll type 140 minus 1 to show that the prescaler value of 139 actually means the clock is divided by 140. So this means that the counter will increment every one microsecond. I will set the period, counter period, to 1000 minus 1. This means the counter will overload every 1000 ticks or every 1 millisecond. This will give us a timer PWM frequency of 1 kilohertz. I will set the, the pulse value to 500 to start with initial duty cycle of 50%. Now I'm ready to generate the code and I'll open the project. I'll use a new workspace. Here I have my STM32 Cube ID project open. I'll close the information center and expand the project. You have application, user, and I'll go to GUI. So I'll start by the generated to show you the uh, the virtual function that we create in TouchGFX Designer here. So we'll see here where this function was created. So if we go to screen one, screen one view base. And if we go to the header file, we'll see that the set duty cycle is created here as virtual, and we will override it in the in screen one dot cpp. So we go here, screen one, view dot cpp, under GUI folder, and we'll create a set duty cycle method. We'll create the prototype. here as virtual void set duty cycle and then we go to the present so from here from the screen view we call the presenter to set the duty cycle of the timer we go to the presenter and from the presenter we call the model to set the duty cycle and we need to call or define the uh, the prototype of the method and we do it's a void method okay and now from the model we need to create uh, or call a set duty cycle we go to the model and in the model we call or define a, a new method set duty cycle which Call the hall driver to set the compare value of channel one in chat in timer five. So we need to call to define the method here in the model header file and set it as void. Okay, we go back to the model.cpp. Here we still need to so that to define the handler for timer five. So we, it's, it's already defined in main.c here, but we need to make it external. So we go back to the model, 
and we do extern handler of timer 5. We need to call or include stm32 h7 hall.h and then we need to start the timer. We go to main.c here and then in the timer init function here we have the initialization code we have the prescaler 140 minus 1 we have the period 1000 minus 1 and we have the, the pulse value this is for the duty cycle and here we, we will start the timer counter and for that we use the API hull timer start PWM start timer 5 and then channel 1 uh, I think that's it. I think we can we can build the project. Click on build here. Build finished successfully. Now I'm ready to download the code. I'll click on debug. do remember my decision and then switch to the new perspective okay download verified successfully now I'm ready to start the, the execution I click on resume or F8 okay now I will start my Sally trace analyzer so I already have my CD connected to the timer. I have my CD connected to timer 5 channel 1, G6 pen. And then I'll start the capture. So here I see my PWM signal, 1 millisecond period and 500 microsecond for the pulse duration. Start again. I will move the slider to the left. We see the pulse value going down, decreases. And then move the slider to the right, and then I see how the pulse value increases. Thank you for joining me in this video, and we hope that you enjoyed learning how to use the slider widget to control a PWM output.